The Emerald Tablets and Space Alien Colonizations in Antiquity Forbidden Knowledge Thoth and Hermes Trismegistus This is translated from a Greek article. How many of you have heard of the 12 Emerald Tablets of Antiquity? And how much less do you know about the forbidden stories that are preserved on the surface of those tablets? Stories that today's archaeologists cite as a myth unacceptable for translation and narration. A myth that is translated nowadays that Thoth Atlantius, the king priest of the mythical Atlantis, the uh, lost continent of Atlantis, was the one who founded the first colony of the lost continent in the land of Chem of Egypt and ruled it for over 16,000 years, from about 50,000 years up to 36,000 years BC, surpassing earthly death. His great wisdom and fame spread across the African continent to South and Central America. And when the time came to leave Egypt, he erected the Great Pyramid of Giza, incorrectly attributed to Cheops, above the entrance to the Grand Chambers of Amethi. He placed his records there and appointed guardians of the highly advanced secret of his race. The guardian descendants became priests of the pyramid, while Thoth was deified by those who lived through the Dark Ages after his passing. It is said that in his last incarnation he became known as Hermes the Trismegistus, the most famous god in all the developed societies of antiquity, and when he drew up the next, the 12 texts we know as the Emerald Tablets, a later but smaller exposition of the ancient sacraments, priests of the Great Pyramid. And the Emerald Tablets? Typically, the words in the 4th and the 8th tablet lead today's readers to realize that the Conventional story told by historians is quite surface of the lake full of treasures of alien colonists. In other words, it's just a skimming of the top of what can be found. And below are some quotes to help you understand what I mean and what they hide from us. Quote, to you man, to you man, I offer my knowledge. I offer the light with a capital L. I offer the light to you. Listen now and receive my wisdom, which has come from the fields of space above and beyond. I do not look like a human being, because I am liberated from the dimensions and the fields. I get a new body in each one. In each, I change my form. Now I know that form is nothing but amorphous. Long before Atlantis existed, there were people searching in the dark, using dark magic, inviting beings from the great seabed beneath us. These beings came into the circle. It was amorphous from another vibration and invisible to the children of the people of the earth. Only with blood could they live in this world. In the past times, they had been subjugated by the masters and driven down to the place from which they came. However, some remained hidden in places and fields unknown to man. They lived in Atlantis like shadows, but sometimes appeared among humans. This was mainly done when they were offered blood, so they were moving between us in human form, but they were only human in appearance. When the illusion they created dissolved, one could see that they had a snake's head, in other words, that they were reptilian However, they appeared to man as human beings. Slowly, they entered the councils taking human forms. Now, can you understand what I'm saying here? In other words, they shapeshift, even though they're reptilian snakes. Going on with the, with the translation, with their arts, in other words, their knowledge, their technology, with their arts, they killed the leaders of the kingdoms, they took shape and dominated people, they took their shape, they took the shape of the killers, the killers, they, they took the shape of the leaders that they killed, so that people believed that they were their actual leaders, whereas they were not, they were the reptilians. However, they knew that the masters were also powerful in magic. They could lift um, the uh, 
veil off the snake's face and sent it back to its place. They quickly lifted the veil from the snake and drove it out of the land of men. But how have the emerald tablets and their secrets survived to this day? Around 1300 BC, in Egypt, ancient Kemal, Kemals were in turmoil and many priestly delegations were sent to other parts of the world. Among them were some of the pyramid priests who carried the emerald tablets with them as talismans with which they could exercise authority over the less developed tribal priests from other Atlanta colonies. Atlanta meaning from the continent of Atlantis, the lost continent of Atlantis, the, from other Atlantean colonies. This particular group of priests who brought the tablets migrated to South America where they found a flourishing tribe, the Mayas, who were very reminiscent of ancient Sophia. The priests settled among them, uh, among them. But the 10th century, by the 10th century, the Maya had been completely settled in Yucatan and the um, tablets had been placed under the altar of the great temples of the sun god. After the Spanish conquest of the Maya, the cities were abandoned and the treasures of the temples forgotten. Since then, a few scholars of the 16th and 17th centuries have dealt with the subjects. Johann Trithemius in 1506, Chrysogonus Polydorus in 1541, Heinrich Kundrath in 1606, Zetzner Ayers in 1661, Isaac Newton in the 17th century AD, and few translated manuscripts, drawings, and paintings, and especially from a wandering board, uh, from, a, from a, 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 one of the uh, emerald tablets that was uh, somehow being moved around in Europe. Now, the um, emerald uh, paintings, the emerald, emerald tablets, also a historical event that historians avoided was the partial translation of Macedonians by John Stoeo in the 5th century AD. Stoeo worked extensively with the emerald tablets of uh, Trimus, translations of which are found in four volume books that had the title Anthology and left it to his son Septimus. There are 17 chapters, four dialogues and 22 teachings dealing with the ancient wisdom narrated in the tablets. Quote, the pre-existing being is superior to all beings of the universe. It is the primordial being by virtue of which the meaning of the so-called universal is understood as the common property of the real beings and the beings which they themselves mean. The beings that ex exist against them and they themselves are the nature that is essentially felt and contained in it all the senses. Between the senses are the signified and sensible gods the participants of the intelligent beings, the intelligible beings, and the doctrines communicating with the signified gods. This is in Stoic 1, 41, and 11. In the early 19th century, the author of the book The Emerald Tablets of Thoth by A.S. Raleigh, associated with the Great White Lodge, was instructed to find and return to the Great Pyramid the ancient tablets. Prior to their return, they were allowed to translate and keep a copy of the wisdom engraved on them. And this was done in 1925, and it was not until the year 2000 that part of them was allowed to be published in a book. The Emerald Tablets, according to Raleigh, the so-called Emerald Tablets were not in fact emerald, but made of a substance unknown to man. They are indestructible and resist all elements and all substances. Their atomic and molecular structure is stable and cannot be altered. So they violate the material law of ionization. These tablets are tied together with rings of a gold alloy mounted on a rod of the same material. The wisdom they contain is the foundation of ancient mysteries in the ancient language of Atlantis. It should be noted here that although the original tablets have not been publicly displayed, the translations of Dr. Raleigh does not mean it's wrong, 
because other researchers of his time, such as Elena Mlavaxi and Suri, have made their similar reports pushing their historicity back 40,000 years. This is uh, research completed by Harris Kutsiaftis in 2016, and it's on the Adrastica and uh, of UFO Truth and Taxidisto uh, Anexido uh, in Greek. And I'll leave links below for you for this. I've translated it from the Greek article in the Adrastica. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.